All right, Shalom to all the believers out there. I want to begin first and foremost by giving all the praises, honor, and glory where it's due, which is to the Almighty, Yahweh, who sits on the throne by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, his only begotten Son, who's at the right hand of him. In the name of the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of truth that was sent down unto us. When I say us, I'm speaking of the Hebrew Israelites. All right, beginning with the men, beginning with the, uh, the elect. All right, they will receive the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of truth, by way of Yahweh Shai, his sacrifice made it possible for this, for this resurrection of the house of Israel to happen. In these last days and times, you're seeing a bunch of so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and, and those that have been scattered that look like the other nations, they're waking up to who they are, their true uh, biblical nationality, which is uh, the Israelites, all right? Of Hebrew, uh, of Hebrew descent, you know, Hebrew goes back to our forefather Eber, or Ibar, all right, which was a forefather of Abraham, Abraham, and he's one of our forefathers as well. And we believe these things to be true by way of faith. All right, so for those who are too carnal, uh, that want carnal evidence and proof, we don't have anything for you. This thing is about faith. All right, the scripture says it. Uh, you know, by faith, you know, the the uh, whereby you have believed will be saved from the coming perils. Roughly paraphrasing the second edge of the ninth chapter. I want to get double honors to the elders that rule well. I also want to give salutations to all the brothers that's out here pushing this truth in the utmost truth, sincerity, and diligence. All right, pushing this word in full force, especially now more than ever, making their lives a living sacrifice, you know, risking their freedom to do this. And also I want to say shalom to all the believers that are hearing our words, that are listening in diligence and in faith, in obedience and repenting. All right, we almost, we almost out of here, man. Uh, before I started the video, there was an older, an older Jake that, that came by and asked me for some money. And uh, it's funny because he asked me, he said, what you doing? I didn't respond yet. He said, you got anything you can give me to help me out to get something to eat? And then he walked, he took a few more steps. And then he pointed above and he said, he going to make a way for me to eat. You know? And, 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 and that's scriptural, man. Because when the, the times are coming where um, I just got an alert that the first set of uh, COVID-19 vaccines have, have uh, made it into Georgia. All right, so the, the, and then they've already been approved. They got approved this week. So, you know, the, the, the jab is about to start going out and the time is gonna come where the beast is gonna force you to bow to him in order to, to receive his, uh, his food, to eat, to, to, to work, to have a roof over your head, okay? But the elect are gonna keep the faith and that's all we have at the end of the day is our faith, all right? You know, things are heating up, things are getting uh, more and more crucial. You know, all the prophecies are speaking. And, and now more than ever, it's important to fight the good faith and finish the course. All right, this is um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. All right, and that's what we want to be able to say when, when everything goes down. Because this morning, I think it was this morning, there was a worldwide Google and a YouTube outage. All right, there was a, it was worldwide, man. So... Hey. All right, thank you. Yeah, you have to have Hey, call y'all by Shamil Shah. Picking up where I left off at, I had to move, but it's all good, man. You know, like the scripture says, agree with that adversary quickly. Hey, she came and said, hey, you know, you can't film on the property, you gotta move. It, it is what it is, no sweat. You know, the word gonna go out regardless, man. So, call out y'all by Shemi I was shy. I don't know where I left off at, but I'm, I'm gonna pick back up at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Right, so we wanna be able to say this, you know, when, when everything shuts down, you know, even leading up to the time of the Lord's second coming, but even before they, oh yeah, that's right, I was talking about uh, Google. Because uh, today there was a worldwide uh, outage on Google and uh, YouTube. All right, so worldwide, you know, all these things were down, these platforms were down, which these are major platforms for the, the distributing of the word, man. This is how the word was able to reach the four corners of the market. The four, <laughs> not the four corners of the market, the four corners of the earth, right? And real soon, it ain't gonna be, uh, the word ain't gonna go out no more, man. So, you know, you want to do the things right now. And I'm, sp I'm speaking to myself also. You want to do the things right now. You know, you want to you want to you want to push as hard as you can, man, because when once the Internet goes down and it, it ain't no more, you know, the word going out, then, you know, that's it, man. 
and and the Lord is pre preparing, you know, the famine of the world. He's preparing to 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 to, to uh, close the doors on this thing, man. You know, because because you you think back in the days of Noah, you know, the, the while Noah was building the ark, when nobody studying that shit, but as soon as the the rain drops start coming down, everybody wanted to get in get in get in the boat. They wanted to get in the ark. They wanted that that protection, and. You know, spiritual on my way here, I was listening to uh, one of the brothers in Jersey. I think his name is Atazawan. Stay in the spirit 144. He was saying that his woman had a dream last night. And, you know, he, he had shared with her the, the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And she prayed to go back to sleep. And when she went back to sleep, she had a vision. And she was saying that basically all hell had broken loose. And she was mad because people were trying to... Um, they were trying to trying to be be like us. They wanted. They were trying to hear the words of the Lord. They were trying to to uh, uh, you know do. Uh, uh, they was basically trying to get saved, all right? <laughs> because all the things that we had been prophesying about, she was saying that we were basically in them. You know, all of the things that we've been saying, the the tribulation, the second Edges, 15th chapter, the 16th chapter, the famine, the pestilence, all these things were happening, and people were trying to basically get 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 into the art they were trying to get the good graces the good graces of the lord so she he was saying that she was getting upset in the dream because she knew that people were only trying to you know cover their asses man people weren't really being sincere about the word they were just trying to to to, to be saved man you know and it's heavy because that's exactly you know you can see that through the spirit you can see that, that, that this is where this is going you know these people don't care about the word but guess what when when that when the famine hits you know, the family of the word, family of the bread, the water, you know, people are gonna wanna wanna hear and they're gonna be running to and fro. And I gotta go ahead and get it. This is Amos the eighth chapter, verse uh, 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You see that? So the, 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 the time is going to come as it is written where the Lord is going to cut off all avenues of this word going out. You won't be able to go out and preach the word. You won't be able to, to upload a video to the Internet. If you ain't speaking, you know, the NWO, you know what they want you to speak, then, hey, you're going to be silenced. All right. The Lord is going to cause our, our, our tongues to cleave to our mouths in that day. Verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea. And from the north, even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Right, they're going to be thirsty for the words of the Lord, man. It tells you in uh, 1 Samuel, I think chapter 3, it says how, you know, the words were precious in those days, man. And, you know, that, that, that's about to play out again on the earth, you know. So as I was, as I was going into, you know, the, the, the power went out, so... Not the power, but the internet, you know, Google and YouTube went down. So, you know, the time is, the time is, hey, the time is getting close, man. It's getting close. Let me go ahead and get uh, First John, not First John, Salakia. This is the book of John, chapter 9, verse 4. I must work. This is Yahweh Shah speaking. This is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. That's right, man. So we should be in the spirit of doing these works while we're able, while it's still daytime, because once the nighttime comes, it ain't going to be no more warning Israel. It ain't going to be no more telling Israel to repent. It ain't going to be no more breaking down Revelation, the 12th chapter and the 14th chapter and Daniel chapter 7. Ain't going to be no more of those things, man. All right. Seek ye the creator in the days of our youth. Let's get that. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now the Creator in the, in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Right, the scripture says, remember, all right, the, the Creator, remember Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in the days of thy youth, all right? Remember him while everything is going good. You don't want to try to seek the Lord while while all hell is breaking loose. And, and as a brother was saying, that's what uh, his woman was saying. She, that, that's what people were doing. You know, people were seeking the Lord when it was, when, when, when it was convenient for them. 
you know? Verse 2, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened. Hey, and, and the grinders are ceasing now. You know, all of these jobs are, are shutting down. You know, matter of fact, I'm, I'm standing in front of a business that shut down. I remember they shut down about, about what, five, six months ago? And they've they been in business a long time, you know? And at the start of uh, this, this pandemic, that's what took them out of business. So we in a time where, where, where the grinding is ceasing, man, and, and, and people, you know, they, they don't see it. You know, because when they look around, because they're they're carnal, they don't see they they're, they're not able to discern the spirit. So don't, they don't see, you know, what's going on in the spirit. They only see, OK, well, you know, there's a pandemic, but everything around me is, is open. You know, there's food. The bars are open. Right. So they don't have a, uh, a priority in, in seeking the Lord, man. They don't care, you know. But hey. Verse 4, and the doors shall be shut in the streets. Hey, and that's what's happening. The doors are being shut in the streets. The businesses are closing. They're boarding up, right? Every time a, a so-called black man get killed, what do they do? The businesses board up everything, right? They shutting down the stores, man. And, and, and you could tell, like, this is a new day. You could tell, like, something different right about now. Like, this ain't like before, man. When have you seen all these businesses boarded up, closed? You know what I'm saying? Knowledge, knowledge is, is increased the way it is. You know, you can tell we definitely in the time of the, of, the, of, the, of the scriptures being fulfilled. Verse four, when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Hey, and, and when you look at all these celebrities out here, all these celebrities are dying, right? You just had uh, Debo, uh, from, what, he, he died on a Friday. How, you know how ironic is that? That's the Lord making my career you. You had um, uh, Pop Smoke, you had King Vine, you know, all these little mumble rap rappers are dying and, and, dying and getting shot and, you know what I'm saying? The daughters of music are being brought low. You had Megan, Megan Thee Stallion get shot in the foot. <laughs> all right, so, hey man, that's it for this place, man. It, it ain't no, uh, like the scripture says, we would've healed her, but she cannot be healed, man. It ain't no coming back for this place, man. This is it. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. That's right, man. You know, it ain't no glory in, in the fact that we come out here and do the work because it's a necessity. The Lord has opened up our minds to understand the scriptures and to be able to teach and break down the scriptures. So guess what? As a, as, a, as a requirement of us, we're required to come out here and do this, to come out and, and preach the gospel. The scripture said, he just said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. All right, so, you know, destruction unto you. You're, you're a wicked servant if you don't, if you don't go out here and, and, and uh, help build, you know, the house of David, man. This is, what, this, is, this is your duty, you know. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And where does one of his commandments? One of, his, one of the commandments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. I'm going to get that. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 22, verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye find, as, as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Right, so go out, you know, in the chief place of concourse, go out where the people are, right, and, and prophesy. Bring out the, the word, man. And, and as many as you can find, bid them into the marriage. What is the marriage? The marriage is the reunion, the, the redemption, of the house of Israel back to the heavenly father, man, through the sacrifice of his only begotten son. That's why the Lord came.
This is uh, Revelation chapter 14. Hold on. Verse, uh, verse 3. I start at the top. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. And with him, 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Right. Having, you know, being sealed with the names Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in this doctrine, in this gospel. All right. They had this written within them. And I heard a voice from heaven and as, as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung it as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. You know, the four beasts are going into the, uh, the different angels. All right. Uh, in the book of Ezekiel, I think the first chapter speaks about that. And no man could learn that song but 140 and 4,000, which were redeemed from the earth. Right. So the Lord is coming to redeem those 144,000 as well as those that would hear that new song that would come from the 144,000. Right? He's coming to redeem us, man. And that word redeem means to buy back. All right? Through the blood of Yahweh that was him buying the elect back. All right? And he's coming back to get his goods. All right? We're his goods. We're the property of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. Which the women are the strange philosophies, all these different manners of doctrines that's in the world. They were not polluted with these things. For they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. Right. And, that, and when you go into that word first fruits, it means, uh, if you look at the third definition, it speaks of um, basically uh, persons higher, higher in rank than others. So the first fruits are the elect. These were the first spirits that were created and they have a higher rank than uh, the rest of the house of Israel. Okay? Because even though all Israelites are special and holy and the chosen people, the elect are actually the chosen within the chosen people. These are uh, 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 the more special. Okay? These are the only ones that the Lord is coming back to, 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 to yank up out of here when he comes. Verse 5. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. That's right, the elect are going to be found without fault, man. Because here it is, you have the accuser, uh, Esau Edom, right? He's going to be trying to use his uh, deceptive media and technology, his AI and all that shit, to, to, to basically point the finger at the Israelites and try to frame the elect. All right, but according as we just read, the elect are going to be found blameless, okay? That's why it's very important to, um, to, to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Because walking in the spirit, you're going you're gonna, to uh, have uh, the fruits of the spirit. You're going to be patient. You're not going to be rash with our mouth. You're not going to do things that, that would offend and, uh, and, and bring blame to the ministry. All right? You're going you're gonna to be uh, harmless as a, uh, as a serpent. I'm so, so like you. Harmless as a dove, but you're going to be wise as a serpent. Let's see what's that first Peter... 2 and 22. This is uh, 1 Peter 2 and 21. For even here too, here unto were ye called, because Yahweh Shai also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps. That's right. Yahweh Shai is the perfect example of where and how to move in this world, man. You know? The perfect example of how to how to move in wisdom, how to be found blameless, how to deal with the enemy, even amongst our own people. This is 20 T, 20, I said 22, I sound like them, them niggas from uh, Baltimore. Verse 22, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. That's right. So Yahweh Shah didn't sin and he had no guile, he had no deception, he, was, he had no, no wrongdoing in his spirit. This is uh, Revelation, back in Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel 
to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Right, and, and, and the reason why that gospel would have to go out to all the different nations, the different kindreds, the different tongues, is because you have the Israelites scattered amongst all, all of the nations. You read Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse um, 64, part of the curses is that the Israelites would be scattered, all right, as a reproach. All right, we, we would be taken out of our land and the Lord would, would, would uh, remove his protection from us and we would get scattered amongst all the heathen. So the word would have to go out to draw, you know, to draw forth the, uh, the Israelites that were scattered from amongst the heathen. This is uh, verse 7, saying with a loud voice, fear the Most High and give glory to him. Right. Fear the Most High, fear you, how about Shem Shai and give him the glory. Because in this world, you have something called vain glory, where man wants to, to receive the kudos for, and the accolades for the, for, the, for the things that they do, for the things that they accomplish. They want you to tell them, good job, congratulations, happy birthday, you know, you the man. You know, and, and us being in the flesh, we want uh, glory as well, but this is not the time for our glory. So that's why we always begin by giving the praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Again, verse 7, saying with a loud voice, fear the Most High and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is coming. We're coming into that hour. We're getting very, very close to the hour of the Most High's judgment, man. Hey, and it tells you that judgment was given into His Son. So, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai's judgment is about to come, man. You know, we're, we're, we're very close, man. Very close. And, and in that time, you know, all of these people are going to be trying to get seats on the ark, man. And I'm going to keep saying that. I'm going to keep saying that because you can see it. You can see how everybody out here is going to try to last ass minute, last ass minute, last minute they way into the ark, man. <laughs> Let's keep going. For the hour of his judgment has come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Right, and for all you idol worshipers, right, all you niggas that worship Egypt, you worship uh, Santaria, you worship uh, uh, Ogun and, and, and Papa Legba, you know, and, and, and these things, did these things make the heavens and the earth and the, and the, and the waters and man? No, they didn't. These things didn't do that. These things are not responsible for all the glory that's amongst us, man, for the Heavenly Father's beautiful creation. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is responsible for these things. Verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, it's fallen. And I saw one of, one of these uh, ancient e Egypt comedic niggas, you know, these one of these Nawapian niggas, um, you know, on, on, on Facebook. He always make, I ain't gonna say always, but I done, I done seen him two or three times make Facebook posts using biblical references you know and i asked i said if y'all knew and y'all believe in in wusabat and in all this egyptian shit why are you always making biblical references man he made a post that said babylon the greatest fallen is fallen bro that's from the bible why you why you won't go go to your books go to your doctrine you know why because in the spirit you know that this is where it's at man the bible is the only thing that, that refers to this place as babylon man that other shit y'all niggas be out here teaching and, 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 and proclaiming to be the truth? No, man. You know that this is Babylon, man. Babylon, America is the only place that, that fits the description of the virgin daughter, the virgin, the whore, okay, the ride of the beast, where all abomination was spread into the earth from her, uh, from her headquarters, Babylon. But it's because you people in these false doctrines, you can't stand on them, and you know you can't stand on them. And it's because the Lord ain't give you understanding. Let's keep reading. Revelation 14 and 8 again. And there follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Hey, that's right, man. All the nations around the earth have tried to be like unto Babylon. You know, they liberate their women. You know, they 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 give homes, they give rights to the rainbow community, to the alphabet gang. 
they they adopt their fast food and their democracy. They wear they wear they are uh, they wear suit and ties. It is cold out here, so I'm, I might be sounding a little funny. I might be mispronouncing my words, but it's cold out here. So Salakia, but all of these nations are adopting the ways of America, okay? And now they are drunk in her wickedness. And what that's what's happening with that is they're beginning to uh, these uh, other nations are beginning to deteriorate from the inside out because following after America, it only leads to decadence, okay? Let's go to Jeremiah 51 and 8. This is a uh, book of Jeremiah 51 verse, verse 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. And when it says mad, it's not saying angry, even though the nations are, are angry, but the nations are crazy. All right, the nations are beginning to bug out. All right, because here it is, you don't, you don't, you don't uh, allow the, the wickedness that is homosexuality to, to penetrate into your society. Now that shit is starting to fester. Now all these different manners of diseases are starting to come into your community, right? You allow fast food and McDonald's and all this filth, all this GMO shit to come into your nations. You know, you allow the American diet to come. Now your, your people are beginning to, beginning to be obese. They're beginning to be lazy, all right? They're beginning to, to follow after the gods of Babylon. They're no, no, they're no longer keeping the, the, the ancient heritage of your people, of your culture. All right, that's what it means by mad, man. Y'all are losing it. Verse 8, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain? If so be, she may be healed. Right, and, and, and Babylon is a sudden, it's suddenly falling. When, when this pandemic hit within the last year, the, the collapse of Babylon has been very sudden, man. You got a lot of people. Hey, even uh, in New York, you got a lot of business owners that are bucking up against um, uh, the lockdown rules right now, man. They, they, they're not having it because, you know, people's livelihoods are being taken away from them all under the banner of so-called public safety, you know? And this thing was sudden on people, man. They didn't see it coming. Here it is, their whole, everything was invested into their business, was invested into their 401k, their jobs, their careers. And then just like that, the Lord just done took it away from a lot of y'all, man. But the servants of the Lord have been, have been good, man. You know, we've been, we've been fine, man. We've been protected. The Lord has been taking care of us. All right, the Lord has us in his protection in his, in his, uh, in his hiding place, man. Call all y'all by shim y'all shot. Verse 9. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. Hey, forsake this place, man. And that's why the, the, you know, what, what, what we're doing is so important because we're giving warning to our people to forsake her, man. Let her go. This is it. This is the end, man. It ain't no, it ain't no going back. It ain't no, uh, you know, no, no putting, no, giving her no bomb for her pain. It ain't no putting no band aid on her. This is it. You know, America is finished. All right. And, and, and as the days progress, people are gonna see that more and more and more. Going back to that dream that uh, that uh, the brother's wife had, man. She said basically people in that dream that they, they saw that it was it. That was it was no more talking. She said that her friends didn't have anything to say in that day. They were very quiet. They didn't have a lot to, you know, she uh, he said that she said that um they didn't they didn't they didn't have any really no opinions, man. Because the time is coming where the Lord is finna shut all that shit up, man. All these opinions that people have, oh the mark of the beast ain't this, the mark of the beast ain't that. You know, all that shit about to be shut down, man. And the only thing that's going to matter is the word of the Lord. And you're only going to be able to get that from his selected servants, man. Those that he has uh, foreordained to get out there and, and teach and give understanding to those that are worthy of it. Back in Revelation, the 14th chapter, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, 
The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Right. So the time is about to come where the beast is about to, you know, the, the beast is about to remove, really the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is about to remove the gray area. Either you're going to be with this beast or you're going to be against it and be with, you know, the righteous ways, with the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh right? Because the beast is going to make it to where you're going to get cut off from society if you don't prove your loyalty to the beast. And when we say the beast, we're talking about the system, man. If you don't pledge your allegiance to this system by receiving this mark in your forehead or in your head, you will not be able to buy. You will not be able to, to, uh, to purchase. You, you will not be able to con uh, conduct, conduct commerce in this society, all right, if you, don't, if you don't play ball, man. And if you're not rooted in the foundation all right, in this, in, this, in this truth that is of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you're going to fold. All on social media, you got people saying, I'm not taking the vax, I'm not doing it, I'll do this before that, and some of you may, right, if you're of the elect. But the majority of you, once the pressure is on you, you're gonna submit. You're gonna submit. You don't know how to fast, you don't know how to skip meals, you don't know how to subdue your flesh, you don't know how to walk in the spirit. So when that time comes, you're going to give in, man. And that's just what it is. Verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whoever, whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Hey, so it ain't, no, it ain't nothing good coming to those that, that, that receive this mark. All right, beginning with this, uh, this fucking uh, vax, man. Don't take that shit, man. Make a stand. All you Israelite groups that's out here teaching, proclaiming the hair of the truth, proclaiming the coming of the names of Yahweh Shem Shai, you need to be telling and warning the Israel not to take that shit, man. Period. Don't be up out here taking this fucking bullshit, man. Esau don't, don't mean you no fucking good, man. Everything this devil does is, 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 is about destroying you, man. He puts fluoride in the water. He puts uh, uh, chlorine in the fucking water. All right, he puts, uh, 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 you know, he does all manners of wickedness. All, all, that, all fucking manners of wickedness in the food, in these vaxes, right? And you have certain so-called leaders telling Jake to take it. And then now he using the so-called black woman with her evil a uh, 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 treacherous, a uh, uh, treasonous ass. He using her. I think it's, it's, it's showing that she the first one to take the vax, man. All right? And a lot of you damn simple ass Jake's gonna, gonna fold and, and, and follow right after the fucking woman and get the, shit, get the shit because you see her simple ass doing it, man. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and the faith of Yahweh Shai. All right, so here is the patience of the saints, right? So right now, you know, we, we're enduring our suffering, we're enduring our afflictions, but it's all to, to, to wait, you know, to, to our salvation, which in the due time is going to make sense. Verse 13, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. That's right, because if we die, you know, doing this work, our works are going to follow us, man. You know, everything that we're doing is being recorded in the heavens. All right, so we really just need to keep doing what we're doing. And, and know that our work is not in vain, man. All right? Whether, whether these people here forbear, it doesn't matter. Whether our channels get deleted, it doesn't matter. Whether we get persecuted, whether we get in prison, all of these things don't matter, man. Do the work. Just do the fucking work, Jake. You say you believe, show that you believe. All right? Because you got a lot of people that say they believe in God, but what are they doing? 
They say they believe in the Bible, yet they never stop and listen to men preaching, preaching the Bible. Okay? These people are full of shit, man. And going back to that dream, the brother's wife, she was upset because she was basically seeing that pe the people were full of shit. They waited to the end, to all hell to break loose, to want to to, to, wanna, to, to wanna get protected, to want to get saved. It don't work like that, man. The Lord said it should be gnashing of teeth. He said when he come, all the tribes of the earth are going to mourn, man. They're going to mourn. <laughs> Great suffering is coming, man. The plagues, the pestilences. The Lord is going to really chastise this, these people, man. He, he's really about to put, put hell on these people, man. These people are really about to feel it, you know? This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Just know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. All right, the, 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 uh, you know, Apostle Paul said perilous times, you know, dangerous. Perils going to dangerous, man. It's going to be dangerous. Why? Because all of these, uh, these, these motherfuckers in the flesh, what they going to be doing? They going to be all about themselves, man. They ain't going to have no, no remorse for you. They ain't going to care about you. It's gonna be all about them and, 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 and you know feeding their, their families. This is Second Edges chapter fifteen, verse fourteen. Now, I'm, actually, I'm gonna start at twelve. It says, "Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah shall bring upon it." Why is the Lord gonna bring punishment on Egypt? Because look at this place, man. Everybody's uh, selfish. They're full of themselves. They're narcissistic. Everyone's a liar. They're blasphemous. All manners of abomination are going on out here. All manners of idolatry, adultery are going on out here. Everything that the Lord detests is being done out here in the streets of Babylon the Great, a.k.a you know, Egypt 2.0. So the Lord is going to bring punishment on this place, man. Look at, what, look at what Egypt has done to the Lord's people, man. Look at what America has done to the Israelites, man. Constant exploitation, constant abuse, constant injustice, right? Rape, robbery, murder, thief. Theft, Salaki, not thief, uh, theft. All these things have been done, man. And, and, and they say, what have I done? They say, we have done no wrong. They say, get over it. They say that was the past. Hey, man, the Lord ain't forget none of that, man. This was just a couple days ago to the Lord. Jumping up to verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction For the sword and their destruction draw off nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men. Hey, and we're at the beginning of that, man. Again, in New York, you got business owners that are, are buck, bucking up against Esau and these uh, these these uh, COVID-19 restrictions, man. Because Esau is the one that are, that are buck up against that shit, man. You know, Jake, Jake docile as hell. It's gonna take the Lord to really put the spirit on Jake to do it. But Esau, man, Esau ain't ain't with that shit, man. Esau ain't with the shit, man. Because Esau consider him considers himself to be an American, right? So Esau, he doesn't take it lightly when you infringe upon his rights. You know, when you take away his guns, you know, when you do these when you uh uh uh, uh, uh you know when you violate his rights that his forefathers you know, so-called died for, Esau isn't the one to uh, take those things lightly, you know? So Esau, you know, the Edomites in New York, man, Lord willing, that shit gonna spread, and, and next thing you know, Lord willing, man, this thing, you know, it's a full-blown civil war, because a lot of people already believe that a, a second civil war is coming. All right, second Edges 15 and 16, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. 
They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their of their actions shall stand in their power. Right? As, as society continues to fall, people are not going to give a shit what a, what a fucking politician got to say, man. They ain't gonna give a shit with the mayor, with the mayor's orders, the governor's orders. You know, it's gonna get to that point where it's gonna get all out, you know, desperate, where the spirit of desperation is gonna be out here, man. And because these people really don't have anything to lean on, you know, the, the flesh is gonna kick in on overdrive, you know? That's why through this grace period, the Lord has given us the spirit to build up, you know, in the spirit, you know what I'm saying? To build up, to set our affections on the things above. Walking in the spirit. Like it. This is uh, the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. All right, so set your affection, man. What are your affections? The things that that you're that that that, that hold your attention the most, the things that you care about the most, the things that are near and dear unto you, man. You're supposed to, to care about the things that are above, which are the things of heaven. Okay, because the things below, the things of the earth. You know, the, the scripture says that the, the earth is going to pass away. This is a uh, second address. It's like second Peter chapter three, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now, Let's go to Isaiah 65, the precept to that, because it's the same thing. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. You know, it's going to be a new, uh, a new day, man, a new age, a new, a new rulership. All right, it's going to be a new everything, man. It ain't going to be no more Wells Fargo, no more, uh, 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 you know, it ain't going to be none of these things, man. No more business. You know, when I say business, I mean, you know, like this shit, man. You know, it ain't going to be business like this, man. You know, so don't set your affections on these things because all these things are going to be burnt up. You know, set your affections on rulership because because the Lord is coming to give us rulership, dominion. We're going to have land. We're going to have servants. You know, we're going to have, you know, free reign to go and do as we please. You know, we're going to have rest. Again, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. So this would be the former. Real soon, this world, this life as we know it is going to be the former. Okay? All right, this is going to be the former. This is going to be a thing of the past. All right, the world as we know it is going to change, man. All right? The Israelites are going to be, you know, it's, the righteousness is going to be the end thing, man. It's going to be in to follow the ways of the Lord, man. You know, it's going to be cool to, you know, to, to, to keep the Sabbath and to, 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 to you know, to, 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 you know what I'm saying? To come together in the name of the Lord and give praises to the Lord. And, you know, it's going to be cool for a woman to serve a man. Because in this world, you know, a woman serving a man is looked down upon. A woman only being with one man, that's that's not really cool in this world, man. Verse 18. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying, because right now we're crying right now. All right, this is the voice of weeping, the voice of crying. All right, the, facts that we, the fact that we're out here, you know, you know, you know, setting up these little altars and crying out, this is us crying out to the Lord to, to establish uh, Jerusalem, man. You know, to bring it into this shit, man. 
You see, you got women out here dressed in, in hard hats and work boots and all this. This is this is this is off, man. <laughs> She's supposed to be in the kitchen, man. She ain't supposed to be out here working in camouflage pants and work boots and, and hard hats. No, steel toe boots and shit. This is a. Uh, This is Isaiah chapter 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth, man. So the Lord ain't going to rest. All right, the Lord is going to bring this thing, man. And that's why we shouldn't rest until the Lord, hey, let's get that. Let's jump up to verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace. Day nor night, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest till he established, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. All right, so don't stop, don't stop bringing it out until the Lord set his people up, man. Until the Lord bring down Esau, you know, we ain't keeping silent, man. We're going to keep coming out here. We're going to keep cussing out you devils. We're going to keep rebuking and cussing out you two-thirds. Until the Lord, until the Lord bring, uh, uh, you know, until the Lord uh, 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 refreshes this place, man, Kainos. Until he refreshes the earth, man. Because this shit is, this shit is old, man. This shit is played out, man. Working, holidays, the Christmas tree, wickedness. You know, this shit played out, man. This shit need to go, man. I'm going to uh, jump up to verse 11. Isaiah 62 and 11, Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Man, the Lord is coming with, with, with gifts, man. All right? The Lord ain't coming empty-handed. All right? The Lord is coming, coming with, 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 a, with a treat. He coming to give to the wicked what they, what they uh, are going to reap. And he's coming with the reward to give to the righteous what they're going to reap. He coming with salvation. He coming with destruction. He coming with, with, with peace and, and deliverance. And he coming with rebuke and fire. You see? This is, uh, let's get Isaiah 66 verse 15. For behold, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. You see? The Lord about to bring that fire, man. The Lord ain't coming back to, you know, he said, what he say about kindling the fire? What will I have to kindle? The fire will be already kindled? All right, the Lord ain't coming back, ain't, ain't coming to fuck around, man. The Lord is, is waiting patiently on the right hand of the Most High. And he ready to come back and get busy in the earth, man. He ain't coming and, 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 and do what he did for nothing to just stay in the spirit world. No, I mean, he coming back to rule with a rod of iron, man. He got he got something for you two-thirds, and he got something for you uh, you uh, Edomites, man. You ain't finna get away uh, uh, clean, man. Verse 16, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Why is the slain going to be many? Because that word plead is the Hebrew word shapat. The Lord is going to judge everyone, man. And, and based on the judgments that are going to come, based on the judgments that are going to come, death is going to be, you know, death is going to be uh, the judgment for a lot of people. So... That's why the Lord is, is, is going to be slaying a lot of people, man, because a lot of you have committed acts that are, are worthy of death, man. And the Lord is letting, he's allowing your sins to pile up. A lot of you are reserved just until the Lord get back to deal with you himself. Right? Because what, what you think going to happen here at Revelation, the first chapter? This is uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. All right? And all kindreds of the earth shall wail 
because of him. Even so, our men. So what do you think going to happen, you know, when those same men that put him on the cross, you know, that crucified him 2,000 years ago, those same bodies are here in the flesh today. What do you think is going to happen when he comes back and he sees you? Because <laughs> he going to come back and he ain't forgot. You know, the Lord ain't, ain't forget, you know, what you Jakes did, man, talking about some you know, free uh, free Barabbas and crucify Yahweh Shai. Lord, ain't forget that, man. Talking about some crucify him, crucify him. Let me get that shit. The Lord ain't forgot that, man. The Lord about to come visit y'all for that. Y'all did say let the blood be upon our children, right? I just read this thing like I read all the gospels of it last last week now I can't remember where it's at. Oh, I know where it's at. I'm tripping, Salakia. I'm tripping. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 27, verse 15. Now with that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Yahweh, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy, they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him saying, so like, let me jump down. Verse 21, verse 20. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Yahweh. The governor answered and said unto them, whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you they said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Yahweh, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil have he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified, man. So you got wicked two third uh, uh, Israelites that are back today that are, that are uh, going to uh, be in this lot today. That are, that are gonna be, um, you know, that, that are gonna be uh, basically wanting the men of the Lord to get uh, put to death today. All right, because when, when the squeeze comes down, you're gonna have a certain elect that are gonna stand stiffly for the names of the Lord, and you're gonna have sellouts that are gonna be saying, hey, you know, that are gonna be, you know, uh, 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 setting us up. They're gonna be hunting us down, you know? Because uh, you had the, uh, I think the elder, I think some, one of the brothers had a dream about that, man, where there was like a reward for the prophets and people were coming all over the earth to try to hunt us down and shit. So you're going to have those same spirits come back and they're going to be in the spirit of, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, release the, the thugs, release, you know, the, the, the wicked ass niggas of Israel. But, but take those men that preach that word and preach in the name of Yahweh Shai. You know, they're going to be saying the same thing, man. That's why the Lord said, uh, but, but blessed are they, a day that are persecuted for righteousness sake. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter five. 
Verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in the heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. That's right. So, hey, if, if we are those men coming back, then, you know, we were persecuted in our past lives for doing the same things we're doing now, which is, you know, standing stiffly in the name of the Lord. And since I said that twice already, let's go ahead and get that in second address, the second chapter. Because th this is the reward that's going to come to us, you know, for enduring and doing what we're doing. You know, if we keep keep to the end, this is a uh, second Ezra chapter two, and this is a, a vision that Ezra saw of Yahweh crowning, you know, the elect, one hundred forty-four thousand. This is a uh, second Ezra chapter two, verse forty-three, and in the midst of them there were a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was more exalted, which he marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel, hey, let me uh, get a precept to that because as I, as I brought out earlier in Timothy, I brought out that first Timothy four and seven, but if you go down to the eighth verse, this is what uh, Apostle Paul was speaking of. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought a good faith. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You see? So that's about to tie in with what I'm about to read. Verse, uh, second Edges 2 and 44. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? And so he answered and said unto me, it is the Son of God, the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. You see? So the reward is coming for those that stand stiffly for the Lord, man. So with that, Lord willing, you were edified. I want to give all the praises on that glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Kadesh. Double honors to the elders that rule well. Peace and salutations to you, to you sincere believers beginning with you brothers that are pre preaching this word in truth and sincerity, and as well as uh, those that are listening and taking heed in obedience and faith and repentance, man. Shalom.